common for family members, um, spouses, etc., um, to also be directors as part of that company structure. And it's just really important to remember that directors' duties are real. They do come with teeth. And if you are in a family structure where you have got a spouse or family member who's also as a director, make sure that they understand their duties as well. And Kia ora team, Richard Liu here, editor at nzentrepreneur.co.nz, and today on the knowledge base, uh, I'm joined by Kirsten Patterson. Kirsten's, Kirsten is the CE, or Chief Executive at the Institute of Directors, um, joining us today, looking forward to some good tips and insights um, around governance, um, everything you need to know as a startup founder or an SME owner. Uh, Kirsten, thanks so much for being here. Kia ora, Richard, it's great to join you. Awesome, cool. So um, for those who maybe haven't heard of uh, the Institute of Directors first up, can you just give us a quick explanation of um, who your organisation is and what's the kind of work you're doing? So the Institute of Directors is the membership body that supports great governance here in New Zealand. We're a voluntary body. Directors can belong to us to uh, sort of get better at the art and the science of governance, the dark arts in many ways, uh, and to join it with a network and a community of people who are really committed to great governance. We strongly believe that good governance drives stronger businesses and drives stronger communities, and that's um, that's good for New Zealand and Aotearoa. That's 10,500 or almost uh, 10,700 members now of the IOD right across New Zealand across our eight branches and everything from um, school boards of trustees uh, sports clubs entrepreneurs business owners uh, through to people involved in co-ops through to NZX listed in Deloitte top 200 boards so kind of governance and boards and it's uh, wider sense, including advisory board members and kind of everything in between across that gambit. Uh, and we help them with uh, networking events, uh, help them with, um, you know, specific skills. We run company directors courses, uh, training, uh, all of those kind of things that uh, magazines, which really help you stay up to date with what's happening in governance and your director's duties and to support you in those roles. Most of our audience watching this are going to be uh, in the entrepreneur category, the founders mm. or the business owners. Um, and, you know, can, can we go straight to governance? So it's a term you mentioned many, many times. Mm. Um, what exactly is that? And, and why should I, as a small business owner or a startup founder, care? Or what, you know, what do I need to know? In this sort of um, language that we talk about, we, we kind of give it a name of governance and all that, that sort of stuff. But in essence, you will have heard this term a thousand times, and that is working on your business, not working in your business. And when we talk about governance, that's what we're talking about. Taking the opportunity to sort of come up, and often the picture or the metaphor that gets used is about getting up in the helicopter, um, you know, having that ship underneath where the ship's kind of heading for a direction we know where it's going to, getting up in that helicopter and looking out, okay, Okay, are we headed out to that Pacific Island? Is that the right island we're supposed to be headed to? Um, or actually, should we be going to a different one? Are we on track to get there? Um, and what are the things that could be coming in our way? Is there an opportunity that's in front of us that we maybe didn't see when we were down on the sort of on the ground on the ship? Uh, or particularly, are there any icebergs or other things and risks out there getting up and taking that longer horizon view? And you know, when you're involved in a startup, if you're an entrepreneur running your own business, you are often all of those departments all at once and it can you know you get caught up a lot in the operational or the sort of you know fundraising and other aspects and all of the stuff that goes with that governance is about taking an opportunity to take a step back doesn't necessarily have to have a board with it we encourage you to do that from an advisory board perspective but even within your own functions step back taking a, a look up and thinking a little bit further out to the horizon Hmm. That's an interesting distinction. I, I want to touch on a bit more if it's cool. Here in New Zealand, um, if you are operating as a limited liability company, um, every company must have at least one director. Hmm. Now, can you just make that distinction a bit more for us between like a, a director versus just a founder or an owner? Like, um, you know, it's probably something that many founders are going to um, they're going to find themselves having to be a director of their own company, potentially at some stage. Mm. Um, so how, if, if, if directorship or if governance is all about that helicopter view, um, what's, what do I need to know in terms of the, you know, the legalities or, or what, what is that distinction between me as a director versus me as just the founder? Yeah, and look, if you are the founder and you own the company, you will be the director. 
right? It's one of the first things we do as we set up the company um, and it requires us to have a director. So, you know, so most of us who have been business owners or been involved in uh, that kind of startup or entrepreneurial world will legally be directors without even realising it. And I just want to make a note before I kind of come on and answer your question that particularly for those in New Zealand, we have a really strong foundation of family business or closely held business arrangements. And it can be really common for family members, um, spouses, et cetera, um, to also be directors as part of that company structure. And it's just really important to remember that directors' duties are real. They do come with teeth. And if you are in a family structure where you have got a spouse or family member who's also as a director, make sure that they understand their duties as well and that they're actively engaged in the governance and operation of the business. We've seen examples where sometimes that, um, you know, that other director isn't aware of health and safety and they've been caught up and you don't want them to be exposed from, um, from that perspective. So just be, be mindful of that. But when we talk about director's duties, that there's lots of um, legality around the Companies Act and all of those different kind of aspects. And that's a really old piece of legislation now. We're hoping it will get a review um, coming up um, post a couple of quite significant legal decisions and obviously with um, political change. But what, when we talk about director's duties, what we're talking about is making sure that you're fulfilling your duty to the company. So you have an obligation to the company. Uh, and when you think about that company, thinking about it as its own entity, it is its own legal um, entity, often, often describe them as teenagers, right? You made them, but you can't control it all the time. And it doesn't always do everything you want it to do. Um, so you need to think about it, you know, in terms of discharging that duty. Are you acting in the best interests of the company? So there's things around: uh, Are you acting in uh, good faith? Good faith towards that company? Um, are you declaring conflicts of interest? Um, uh, making sure that you're not involved in reckless trading, and we can have a conversation about that because that's a really tough one around entrepreneurial startup environments. It's quite a different risk um, environment. And are you um, complying with your duty of care um, to ensure that that company always remains solvent and that you're meeting those obligations? So if you think about where your company butts up against others, so whether it butts up against um, perhaps suppliers or against employees, it butts up against how you're um, positioned in the community, then you'll normally find um, where those duties and things lie. And that helps give you some guidance. Okay, when I'm coming up against shareholders, um, or what what are my duties here? What would be reasonable when I'm butting up against staff? There must be some duties, and what's a duty of care, and what's reasonable? So that kind of those boundaries, thinking about that separate legal entity, got to treat it as independent. What's in its best interests, and then how do I sort of um, act reasonably towards everyone else that butts up against that company? You'll probably be in pretty good space from thinking about legal duties. Um, it strikes me the you know the thing that jumped out was the notion that um, you know as a founder or of a new venture or social enterprise um, we are creating something and you you know <laughs> refer to it as a potentially a teenager uh, that we can't control all the time. Um, I think potentially you know that's something that's possibly quite often overlooked um, in the process of us starting businesses. Uh, that, yeah, we go and do the paperwork and we nominate ourselves to be the director or uh, ourselves and another or mm. whoever it is. And we do that and that goes away and then we never think about it again. But pointing out here, you know, um, that, like you say, there are teeth uh, in behind um, some of the legislation about what your responsibilities are mm. as a director of your own company. Um, now, for new pe pe people, people who are new to business, um, and may have never heard about um, governance or don't know anything about being a director other than they've had to sign a form that maybe their accountant gave them when they incorporated the company. Like, how do they go about learning about this stuff? Have you got resources um, or places that people can go along to and find out about the, um, you know, the legal side of what they're signing up for. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Look, there's information on the IOD website um, about some of those duties. We've also, um, and so some of that's freely available just to make sure, because it's so important, we think people should have access to that information. Uh, there's some, some information in there um, about, particularly about advisory boards. If you're sort of starting out and thinking, well, I might want to have um, a governance structure or might want to sort of think a longer term about maybe exit or sale preparation 
or if it's a family held business over time, how do we kind of manage that intergen um, intergenerationally? There's information about that. Uh, and training courses is said everything from governance, finance, strategy, through to um, you know chairing the board once you get to that point or uh, our company directors course. But also there's lots of um, really good information. We've partnered with other organizations, including uh, the company's office, so biz.gov.nz. Um, it's got some really good information, kind of governance 101, director duty 101, um, training modules and content there that I really encourage people to have a look at um, to sort of to build up that knowledge uh, of what your director's duties are and, and how that um, you know, how that can sort of play out for you, and particularly thinking about things like health and safety, right? That's the, there's a, there's a real duty here. I often joke with the people at work that, uh, you know, as a, as a CEO, if I have a bad day at work, I, you know, could get fired, not ideal, but, you know, recoverable, go and get a job somewhere else. As a director, if we have a bad day at work, you, you know, you could go to jail and you can lose your house, right? So it is a real duty. You do have to take it really seriously. Um, but that's not to say that you should be scared of it either. There's lots of cases that show where you are operating with due care. You've really thought about it. You're And you're, you know, applying your best judgment um, and acting fairly on all of those people where you might butt up against, you'll be okay. Right. Um, you mentioned in the um, advisory boards. Mm. And can we talk now about, um, let's say as our business develops, we we hopefully our startup is showing signs of success and maybe we're yeah. getting some growth and traction. Um, and all of a sudden, we're very busy as founders and we're needing to grow the team. Um, at what point might it be a good idea to start looking at appointing external directors um, onto our board, uh, or, or even at, at an advisory board, or potentially more formal, you know, board of directors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It will vary for every company. And I think it's really important to note that there is no one size fits all governance model. And I think people often think, firstly, that the IOD is only about corporate governance and we're not. Um, but then secondly, I think that they often think that we advocate for or that there is kind of one model of governance. And it, it varies, you know, what works for governance in a large listed board is going to be really different than what works on a school board of trustees. So, you know, you, it does have to be situational for your particular industry, the growth state of what your business is at, and your ambitions. So we see some startups who are thinking about governance and structure from the very beginning. They're doing that because they want to bring in external expertise. They're doing that because they, you know, they want to build those systems in. They're thinking about things like an exit strategy at some point, either listing, in which case they will need to, or to sell into a listed environment. Um, so in which case you'll need to have some governance structures and things in place to be able to do that. Um, and the other thing is, if unless you're wanting to build a job, if you ever actually want to truly build a company, that company needs to be able to operate without you. Um, so if, you know, from a founder perspective, the business can't operate without you, then that, you know, have you actually built a company or have you built a job? So at some point, if you're wanting to sell, you're wanting to pass that on, you're wanting to retire, you're going to want or you want to go and work on another idea or something else strategically, making sure that you've got systems and structures and guidance in that business is really, really critical. The other thing about uh, boards is I think often there's a perception that they're about control, compliance, they feel heavy, kind of looking backwards. And when I talk to CEOs, I say to them, look, you know, if I could give you like a dragon's den um, once a month where you had the most amazing, you know, I can put six people together. There's going to be an accountant, you know, there's going to be a lawyer, there's going to be somebody who deeply understands your industry, it's got some tech experience, understands sales into market, and has got, you know, industry experience from your particular operating area. And I say, we're going to test your strategy every month. We're going to give you coaching and advice and feedback. And we're going to have a really great conversation about your business. They go, awesome. That sounds great. Sign me up. And then I say, and we're going to call it a board. And they go, no, nah, I don't want that. Right? Because it's, it's just all about that kind of brand and perception. But actually, good governance is about getting some external advice. So often we hear that the next tipping point for people about bringing on an advisory board is often their bank. So when you might have to, you know, go for another round of capital raising or um, in, when you're getting some provisions in place with the bank, the bank might say, actually, it's time. It's time that we actually have some increased um, support here. And sometimes that'll be from your chartered accountant, local lawyer, people that you know, 
um, in the industry, et cetera. You know, an advisory board doesn't necessarily mean external people coming in to take over your company. Um, it's about some trusted advisors who have got different skill sets to you so that you're getting the best and, and kind of um, they're able to really help you, um, you know, take take your startup to the next phase if that's a startup or, you know, um, grow the business depending upon what your strategy is. Build your board based on your strategy. Awesome. There's some great insights there. Um, now, can we quickly sort of wrap up um, by talking about a few differences between um, what we refer to as startups uh, versus, yeah. say, more established businesses, right? So we're talking about yeah. businesses that are just getting going uh, in their niche. Maybe they don't have a product yet. They don't have a customer base. Um, they don't know how they're going to solve the problem they're aiming to solve. Um, so for people who want to join startup boards, uh, so talking about directors now, people who want to um, yeah. give back, say, to the next generation of founders, what are some of those key differences uh, that spring to mind for you? And, and how does it affect uh, maybe uh, how the governance of that particular organisation versus a more established company? Yeah, the, the great startup directs that I get to see, um, some of the sort of characteristics that they've got, uh, they're really curious, they're, they're really great um, at communication and relationships. Uh, so so that, you know, the network's, uh, much more important um, in the startup world than they are, than they are um, in perhaps some of our broader corporate boards because we're often calling on those networks a lot more. Um, so, you know, you're wanting to sometimes bring somebody in who's got a particular network that you're trying to unlock. Uh, so, you know, so there's a much more kind of connectedness from that perspective. And the risk profile is quite different too, right? Some people will be incredibly comfortable um, in a corporate board where they feel there's a lot of support and structures around that. Some people not comfortable in a startup board with the risk and challenges that come with that, where cash flow might be a little more patchy. Uh, actually, you know, where there is, as you say, still growing the customer base, still growing the product uh, in those aspects. So, so what we see directors really thrive in that area is where they have a much higher risk profile and a risk tolerance. Um, where they've got really great um, communication and are able to sort of come up much more practical um, and understand that line of governance and management but run pretty close to that edge right because a lot of the things that you'll be talking about in a startup board environment hey let's strategically we're going to head for this horizon and then you need people operate to operationalize that you need someone to sort of kind of get down and when I talked about that metaphor about the helicopter um, and the ship I sometimes think that not-for-profits and startups are really similar in the way that sometimes it's not a helicopter. We don't actually sometimes always get the luxury of getting off the ship up into the helicopter, and it's a bit more of a drone. Sometimes we're actually still on the ship trying to run it and still do all of that stuff, but we have the chance to send a drone up to kind of do that. So directors who do really well in those startups enjoy that, enjoy both those aspects, and they enjoy being deeply involved who are um, with coaching great people. So um, great startup directors, um, really good at coaching great founders, um, helping them grow and grow their businesses. Uh, so they really deeply care about the people, which is amazing too. Very cool. Now, um, just one, one more to finish. Um, any last final messages um, in this opportunity that you might like to share with uh, Kiwi founders out there who might be watching this? It, just to say thank you, right? Uh, it's the, absolutely the um, the blood of the New Zealand economy. It's uh, really, really critical. Uh, we need more. We, and um, just to think bigger, um, governance can help you on that. Uh, New Zealand Inc. needs uh, more of you. We need um, more bigger New Zealand businesses as well. Uh, so, yeah, thinking about how good governance can help you scale those businesses uh, would really kind of be be my call and just let you know that IOG is here to help you. Brilliant. And that was Kirsten Patterson, Chief Executive at Institute of Directors. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Richard.